Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Today, we will present to you our report about social self. It includes these topics social psychology, person perception, social norms, and together as a group, which consists of social loafing, conformity, and social roles. I am Shakira Faye leader of Group 2, and these are my members. I am Jam Crystal Buco. I am Juliana Marie Biscay. I am Ranz Ancanillas. I am Carlison Hirao Caro. I am Lawrence Jinjua. I am Kirk Michael Cordero. I am Kizzy Lars Kalubang. And we are your reporters for today. Social self, social psychology, person perception, and social norms. Today, I and Renz will discuss to you about social psychology and its origin. What is social psychology? Social psychology are not only interested in social issues like peace or conflict. They also seek to understand social behaviors in general. To understand how people think, feel, act in a certain social situations. Social psychology are the people who study it is present in order to understand reality. Social psychology is defined by countless experts in the field in different ways. First, branch of psychology that studies individuals as they interact with others. Second, broad field whose goal is to understand and explain how thoughts, feelings, and behaviors influence by the presence of or interaction with others. Lastly, study of the effects of social factors on individuals' behavior, attitudes, perception, and motives. With a given definition, the common denominator among this is that social psychology is a scientific study of the feeling, thoughts, and behaviors of individual and social situations. There are two themes that we should remember whether we are talking about studying individuals in social situations. First is people are influenced by the social environment. Second is individuals actively construe or interpret social situation like people behave differently because people think differently. How is this related in finding yourself? Social psychology can be used in different areas of our lives, such as our way of thinking, relationship like personal and professional, physical and mental health, and etc. At the center of all this, it's human social cognitive system interacting with everyday situation. Social psychology is the scientific study of how we feel about think, about we behave toward the people around us, and how our feelings, thoughts, and behaviors are influenced by those people. Social psychology studies why we are often helpful to the other people and why we may at the other times be unfriendly or aggressive. Social psychology study both the benefits of having good relationship with the other people and the cost of being lonely. For example, you are likely to behave much differently when you are around a group of close friends than you would around a group of colleagues or supervisors from work. Social psychology study that the factor leads people to purchase one product rather than the another how men and women behave differently in the social settings, how juries work together to make important group decisions, and what makes some people more likely to recycle and engage in other environmentally friendly behavior than the others. And social psychologists also study more unusual events, such how people might choose to risk their life to save that of complete stranger. And we have the origin of social psychology, the frame of social psychology, and the concepts. In North America, the cognitive dissonance of Leon Festinger in 1957, a person may experience psychological discomfort or when there are inconsistencies between one's cognitions, beliefs, attitude from one's behavior. European concepts. Social representation of Maskovici in 1961. The social shares ideas about the world around us in order for the people to understand and interact with each other. They need the commoners socially shared meaning about objects and ideas. Social identity theory, Taj, Fole, and Tomar in 1979. The groups are important source of the pride and give us the sense of belongings. Try to explain the existence of the group biases discrimination and the discrimination and in the philippines 
the Psicologium Filipino, Virgilio Enriquez, the father of the Filipino psychology, a protest against colonization or the Philippine colonial education. Person Perception a person's perception is an element of social psychology concerning how we process information about people. The term is somewhat misleading because person perception does not deal with perception per se. Uh, rather, it concerns social processing issues like what information we extract when we see other people, how we interpret what we see, and how this interpretation influences our subsequent behavior. Uh, what we see and how this interpretation influences our subsequent behavior. Research in person perception has focused on the social and cognitive biases that influence our interpretation of others, particularly of people we do not know. For example, uh, models of perception can offer accounts of what we remember about the person who serves us coffee our impression of the couple uh, sitting behind us on the bus and how we feel when someone in our social group performs a poor, poorly on task. Uh, research has highlighted the non-vertical nature of person perception revealing a number of biases that are relied upon in, all, in order to cope with enormous complexity of social information processing. Uh, these biases, biases included attribution errors, uh, context effects, and the most widely studied element of person perception is social categorization. Uh, social categories or stereotypes can have significant influence of, on a person's perception providing a framework through which the processing of stereotypes consistent information is facilitated. Uh, dual process models predict the situation in which social cognition is dominated by categorization. Uh, rather than if, rather than individualization, social categories also influence our so source of identity. Uh, the tendency to identify with particular in groups and denigrate out group. The tendency to identify with particular uh, excuse me, and the related self categorization theory. More recent work has focused on identifying the neural curve plates of social processing highlights roles for prefrontal and limbic parts of the brain. And then even people under normal circumstances who are good and perceiving others can struggle when the environment is not deal. ideal. Some people and behavior are just harder to read than others. Uh, estimates suggest that we, we judge emotions from facial, uh, facial, what do you call this? Facial expressions. Uh, for example, uh, a smile means happiness and a frown means sadness. Uh, however, we are much less accurate when inferring emotion intention from voice alone. Uh, decades of research has shown that perceiving others more accurately is directly related to satisfying and productive interactions in the sales and service prof professions. Uh, those who are better at perceiving the intentions of prospects or the customers within, within the business has more wins in business, like receiving large salary raises and have higher customer satisfaction rating. When it comes to noticing and interpreting another person's behaviors, individuals vary at this scale. In the overall population, person perception falls on a bell curve, meaning a few people are really good at it, but most of us fall in the middle of the curve. We are actually pretty poor when it comes to assessing our own ability to perceive others. We overestimate our ability to successfully read other people and assume the things we are inferring about others are correct. In one study, 75% of surgeons surveyed reported that they had communicated well with their patients. However, when they asked the patients, only 21% reported satisfactory communication. One of the reasons we have such little meta-awareness of our own ability to effectively perceive others is that we receive very little feedback about the inferences we make. We often get it wrong and don't know it, causing the quality of our communication to suffer. Obviously, person perception is a very subjective process that can be affected by a number of variables. 
factors that can influence the impressions you form of other people include the characteristics of the person you are observing, the context of the situation, your own personal traits, and your past experiences. People often form impressions of others very quickly. With only minimal information, we frequently base our impressions on the roles and social norms we expect from people. For example, you might form an impression of a city bus driver based on how you would anticipate a person in that role to behave. Considering individual personality characteristics only after you have formed this initial impression. Physical cues can also p play an important role. If you see a woman dressed in a professional looking suit, you might immediately assume that she works in a formal setting, perhaps a law firm or bank. The silence of the information we perceive is also important. Generally, we tend to focus on the most obvi obvious points rather than noting background information. Social norms Before we proceed to social norms, let us first define norms. Norms are patterns or traits characterized as typical or usual in a group. These are traits that are considered average or normal in a certain group. Example, in Filipino society, there are certain jobs or career specifically dominated by men or women. But as time passes, these jobs or careers also evolve and the people working or taking those paths also changes. Therefore, norms change over time to factors like financial, moral, social, and psychological aspects of society. Social norms, on the other hand, are spoken or unspoken rules for being in which particular situation which serve to guide or regulate the manner in which people conduct themselves. Why do we need social norms? Behaviors should be controlled and are regulated because of social consequences. Our behaviors should be our responsibility. We must make sure our behaviors do not hurt, offend, or disturb other people in order to maintain harmony and good relationships. Social norms are the unwritten rules of belief, attitude, and behaviors that are considered acceptable in a particular social group or culture. Norms were us with an expected idea of how to behave and function to provide order and predictability in society. For example, we expect students to arrive to a lesson on time and complete their work. The idea of norms provides a key to understanding social influence in general and conformity in a particular. Social norms are the accepted standard of behavior of social groups. These groups range from friendship and work groups to nation state. Behavior which fulfills these norms is called conformity. In most of the time, rules and norms in powerful ways open understanding and predicting what people will do. There are norms defining appropriate behavior for every social group. For example, students, neighbors, and patients in a hospital are all aware of the norms governing behavior. And as the individual moves from one group to another, their behavior changes accordingly. Norms provide order in society. It is difficult to see how human society could operate without social norms. Human beings need norms to guide and direct their behavior, to provide order and predictability in social relationships, and to make sense of and understanding of each other's actions. These are some of the reasons why most people, most of the time, conform to social norms. Social self, together as a group. What is social loafing? Social loafing describes the tendency of the individuals to put forth less effort when they are part of a group. Because all members of the group are pulling their efforts to achieve a common goal, each member of the group contributes less than they would if they were individually responsible. When an individual is doing less when in a group, that is called social loafing. It was first discovered by Maximilian Ringelmann in 1913 when he noticed group pulling power in a tag of war game is less than the sum of an individual's strength. 
Average contribution decreased with more members in the team. This phenomenon suggests that members put less effort as a group size grows. For example, if you were working on your own, you would have broken down the assignment into steps and started work right away. Since you are a part of a group, however, the social loafing tendency makes it likely that you would put less effort into the project. Instead of assuming responsibility for certain tasks, you might just think another group member will take care of it, or in some cases, the other members of the group assume that someone else will take care of their share of work and you end up getting stuck doing the entire assignment yourself. When one student does all the work and the others get the grade, those who don't work on the project are called social loafers. Social loafing has two main types. The first one is the free rider effect. It is the feeling one will have when one assumes that one's effort is no longer needed for the other group members are viewed to be more capable of performing the task at hand. This effect mostly occur when people think that they are not smart enough or good enough. They think that the other group members are better than them so they're so their opinions won't matter much since the more capable ones will have and will always have better ideas than them. The second effect is the sucker effect. This is the type of social loafing where the good performers in the group will no longer perform well since the free riders are not doing anything. So this effect affects the good performers of the group since other members are not doing thinking that the good performers will take care of it all, the good performers of the group will think that it is unfair. Unfair in the sense that even if it is a group activity, they end up, um, in the end, the work piles up in front of them. This could lead to the good performers losing the motivation to start doing the work and the worst case is that they would end up doing nothing at all since no one is doing their parts. That is why it is called the sucker effect. So social loafing, it is like a virus. It is very contagious. It affects everyone once one member of the group starts social loafing. So social loafing does not occur naturally. So here are the factors why social loafing occur. The first one is lack of motivation. This can play an important role in determining whether social loafing takes place. People who are less motivated by a task are more likely to engage in social loafing when they are part of a group. It is either the members are not motivated enough to carry out the group, either because they do not have good relationship with the members or the goal is not necessarily important to them. So team members begin loafing socially when they are not with their friends, and a group with people they are not that close with or don't talk much casually. And also when they feel that they are not going to achieve much and their participation is optional. The second factor that affects that help social loafing occur is the size of a group. So in small groups, people are more likely to feel that their efforts are more important and will therefore contribute more. The larger the group, however, the less individual effort people will extend. The bigger the size of the group, it is more likely that members will social loaf for, this, for their responsibilities now spread thin and accountability is hard to impose. The third factor is the lowered sense of efficacy. It is the feeling a member can feel that one's effort is not necessary or not important. People are more likely to engage in social loafing if they feel less personally accountable for a task and know that their individual efforts have little impact on the overall outcome. This is often used to explain the bystander effect or the tendency to be, to be less likely help a person in need when others are present. So if team members feel their impact will not worth much, 
especially in a much larger team, they may decide that they'll just let those who they think are more capable do all the work. Lowered sense of efficacy is why members don't volunteer for projects and take up leader positions because they think that they don't have much to offer. It usually roots from having low self-confidence. Conformity 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 is yielding to a group pressure to act as everyone does direct or indirectly. It is either motivated by normative reward or avoiding punishment or informational wanting to be right. The factors why individuals conform are the following. Number one, the size of the group. The more members there is in the group, individuals are more likely to conform to the rules and regulation of the group. Number two, anonymous groups. The more cohesive the group is in terms of their values, goals, and purpose, the more likely one will confirm. Number three, culture and those having cleavage culture, like ASEAN countries, are more likely to confirm than those having individualist culture, also like Western countries. Aside from the factor, we also have types of conformity, compliance group acceptance. This is a type of conformity their one will comply to a group's demand just because one need to either for survival or, or for acceptance in the society. Internalization, genuine acceptance of the group norms. One is not only conforming just for the sake of complying but because one is actually identifying with the group one is belonging to identification group membership one is conforming to a group because you need to identify with the group norm either for a career like job or position in the society so let's go to the social rules social rules social rules Social rules refer to the expectation, responsibilities, and behaviors we adopt certain situations. The ideas for accepted or normal behavior are reinforced both by individuals and by society. It is as takes on many different rules on this shift among them throughout our lives, throughout each day. Also, social rules help specify the part position of of person society, this is also a specified behavior expected to be exhibited by individual and practicing their rules. Individuals are either aware or not aware of these social rules to have. Social rules are important to in order for us to have clear out that expectation on what to expect from people and from ourselves. Social rules expect facilitate people's ability to work together toward the common good. Social rules and a pattern behavior that expected to represent giving sitting in a group. Each one of uh, several social rules, you may be at the same a uh, student, a parent, aspiring teacher, a son, daughter, a spouse, and a lifeguard. How did that social rule influence your behavior? Social rules are defined by cultural shared knowledge. This nearly everyone in a given culture knows that is expected for a person in a given rule. For example, what is the social rules for a student? If you look around the college classroom, see student engaging in studios. Before like taking their notes, listening to the professor, reading to the books or textbook, and sitting quietly at their desk. Of course, you may see the student dividing from the expected studios because behavior such texting their phone through Facebook, their laptops, but in all case, all the students that you observe are attending class a part of the social rules of students. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for listening.